Hello aspirants, in this video I would like to discuss about how easy is it for the law graduates to crack the civil service examination. Now law graduates, basically it may be 5 years law graduates or 3 years law graduates. In that 5 years and 3 years you would be going through number of laws, procedural laws, substantive laws etc. But along with the substantive laws and procedural laws you will be learning certain basic subjects like economics or sociology, political science in your BA LLB or you may be in your BCom LLB you will be uh, you'll be studying about economics or you'll be studying about accounts along with the law subjects. So the depending upon the combination uh, along with that procedural and substantive laws you end up even studying various other general subjects like economics, political science or sociology, history etc. So now what is the ultimate motto of, of this video. Now, I would like to share one information. Among all the graduates, for law graduates, this exam, the civil service examination is comparatively easy. I'm not talking about the stats. I'm not talking about the percentage of clearing the exam. Even though the law graduates percentage or people who are taking law option are clearing much much better than the other optionals, I'm not concerned about that. But I'm concerned about the basic preparation for this examination, the, the chances of clearing this examination. Being a law graduate, you have the you have certain skills which other graduates will not have it. Example, writing skills, drafting skills. That writing and drafting skills which we develop in that five years is will be immense. Another ordinary graduate will not have such kind of drafting skills. Second thing, voracious reading. What kind of books we read, starting from constitution to taxation to corporate law, we read numerous books, huge volumes, that's our job, day to day thing that a law graduate does. And with that voracious reading capacity and the drafting skills, you will develop the, the most important skills which other person cannot develop is analytical skills or connecting the dots. When we read a particular line, we actually go into the depth of the client. We will interpret in a such a manner that other person also cannot interpret. Only a law graduate can interpret. A line or a paragraph can be interpreted in a multiple ways. That's what we do in a judgment. That's what, that's what we do while reading a section or an article. This capacity is very, very important for civil service examination. The analytical skills, connecting the dots. This an ordinary person cannot do. We will be reading a lot of current affairs also during our law course. How we will be reading current affairs? If a new act is passed, new amendment is passed, what is its background, what is its foreground, what are the facts, what happened? Everything we will read. Then only you will understand the reason for an amendment. Then only you will understand the beauty of a new law. The objects and reasons of a new the objects and reasons of a new law. All these things are anyways dealt in the current affairs. That's what they are going to deal again in the civil service examination too. Just let, just let us understand what are the subjects which we have studied in the law are useful for the civil service examination. First to take polity. What is polity and governance? Polity is nothing but the constitution. How the country is working. That's what is dealt in polity. That's what we, al we already study in constitution also. Then what is governance? Governance is dealing, governance deals with the laws which are very very important for running the country or the system. Now say for example, e-governance, Prevention of Corruption Act, Money Laundering Act, which are not only important for governance, which is also important for internal security. We would have already studied in our graduation. If not, if we didn't study that specific law, it will be a cakewalk for, for us to understand that legislation. Understanding legal language, is it a tough job for a law graduate, please tell me. Legal language is one of the toughest languages. If that language only you are able to understand means, then what about the normal English that is given in a newspaper? How easy that would be for you? So polity, governance, already you have an idea in your law school and again brushing it up and Connecting the things with the current affairs, it's an easy job thing for you. First thing. Second, look at history. 
modern india if you look at modern india mm. if you talk about you talk about a lot of acts like say for example government of india 1935 government of india 1999 why it happened what were the reasons for passing of it and what are the consequences what are the importance of those acts anyways you will study all these things in your modern india these things you would have already studied in the indian legal history that's part of your syllabus you know why the acts were passed you know what kind of legal system used to be there then what were the drawbacks of it what were the loopholes of it that majorly is dealt in the modern india too so you have an idea about it now third thing international relations international relations without public international law what is international relations if you want to understand public international law if you want to understand united nations if you want to understand all the relations between the countries and all without understanding public international law or without understanding international relations you can't understand public international law without understanding public international law you can't understand international relations they go hand in hand so you already know that then how easy is it for you then what about economics guys you have already studied taxation you have already studied corporate law you have already studied sebi which means you have already specialized in the economic system how the country works now when you are good at that automatically development economics is very easy for you in upsc civil service examination concentrates on development economics monetary policy fiscal policy five year plan agriculture sector industrial sector service sector how is it performing this basics the thought you are going to study in civil service examination you have already mastered the higher level that is taxation that is sebi guidelines corporate law you have fema these are the mastering things you have mastered that basics is after all for you and what about the wto wto is part of your syllabus which is very important for economics as well as in for international relations and geopolitics too now these many subjects are overlapping tell me which is the other graduation which is the other graduation where you have so much of variety where you have command over all these aspects no other graduation other than law then what are you scared of science and technology science and technology hardly two, three questions comes in gs paper 3 three. three to four questions in prelims and if you are good at these subjects automatically you can you little more concentration and little more study of science and technology you can master in that as well that's not that will, that's not a real hurdle for you then what about geography geography is new for everyone whatever the basics we have studied till 10th because very few people who have done masters in geography bachelors in geography are going to write this examination and geography comes in prelims few questions five to six questions or maximum 10 questions and the same thing appears even uh, and in gs paper 1 it comes so in this way geography is new for not only for law graduates it's new for any social science graduate and even for engineering graduate also then is that a hurdle for you definitely not then what about the environment you guys would have studied the famous public interest litigation mc mehta versus union of india environmental protection of wildlife protection of forest conservation act all these are part of your law course that's what environmental environmental studies is all about that's what disaster management is all about you would have studied natural national disaster management act also in your law school so tell me what is new here science and technology maybe a little bit out of geography in that environmental and uh, disaster management already you have an idea then are you scared of csat csat is qualifying paper six marks you are supposed to get in csat if you are good at in reading comprehension and logical reasoning which you have already tested the waters in your 12th itself because for cracking any good law school you should have that reading comprehension skills you should have good logical reasoning school skills etc leave that apart even in your law school also even in law also what is the important thing that you need to have good reading comprehension skills that that's what you are going to do in your law school as well reading a lot of books and improving your reasoning capacity if these things are there csat is also comparatively easy job for now tell me for whom this examination is easier for a law graduate why first thing 
you have a good analytical reading capacity second majority of the subjects overlap with civil service majority of your law subjects overlap with civil service examination third the speaking capacity the discussion capacity a lawyer the first thing a lawyer has is speaking capacity which is very very useful in your interview too so if all these things skills which a law graduate naturally has it you just need to tone you just need to skill up that's much easier than any other graduates i hope this video will be very useful for all the law graduates who are preparing for civil service examination and all the best for the preparation thank you